Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, Jack. Thanks for coming tonight. Um, if you're just here, happenstance. Uh, dinner was fantastic, but I'm here. My name is T.G. Jamroz. I'm a, a filmmaker in Chicago. Uh, I've been working on a documentary for the last number of years, um, lengthened by the pandemic, of course. And it's called The Murals, as you see. Tonight, I have some footage, some rough cut footage, just some scenes we're going to watch. Um, still working on it. Um, but just wanted to have an opportunity to show a little footage, talk about what I've been doing, um, and then also, you know, have a little conversation if you'd like. Um, basically, this all started several years ago. I was in the post office at Uptown. Have you all been to the Uptown post office? Have you noticed the murals? Yeah. So I was standing there because I live in that neighborhood, and I looked up and I thought, what are these things? And that led me seven years later to be here tonight. So be careful what you ask because there's a lot of rabbit holes you can go down. So um, it's a story basically of the Uptown Post Office murals, Sullivan, Sandberg, and Poor. Sullivan and Sandberg and Vachel Lindsay, you might recognize all those names because they hung out at the Cliff Dwellers Club famously. Sullivan, of course, wrote his autobiography at that desk in the corner over there. And um, Henry Varnum Poor is the poor name. Do you all know who Henry Varnum Poor is, anybody? Okay. Henry Varnum Poor is a famous artist from New, New York City, New City, uh, New York. And he turned out to be one of the most influential artists of the 20th century I knew nothing about. Very much like Sandberg, but Sandberg was real good at self-promotion, so... There's a little bit, of, little bit of difference. And, of course, I live about two blocks from where he wrote Chicago Poems, Carl Sandburg. So, you know, I've always had a very big effect for him. And Sullivan is a, a mysterious figure that I'm still learning about. Um, and, again, Vachel Lindsay was another character who, have you ever heard of him, a poet from Springfield, was an influence here. So what we're going to do tonight is I'm hoping that we don't have any technical issues or stopping and starting. I'll just be showing some footage, and then, like I said, I'll talk a little bit about it. Now, when we're done, you guys can take a look. I have a lot of really interesting books. This is a first edition of a, The Congo by Vachel Lindsay, very rare book. Um, of course, I've got Sullivan's autobiography he wrote here. And um, interestingly, Henry Varnum Poor was a war correspondent in 1943, in Alaska, he wrote a book called An Artist Sees Alaska. And of course, the signature at the post office says 1943 on the murals. So it was the same time. Um, it turned out 42 was when he got commissioned. He was gone all 43, and then they were installed at the end of 43 up at the post office. But during this time that the murals were being worked on, Henry Varnum Poor was in Alaska. And, I will show a little bit of footage. I have a little PowerPoint at the end, and then we can talk a little bit. But that that's it. Just wanted to give you a little bit of background on that. And let's see if we can get this to work. Like you go down some rabbit holes, and it's, it's hard to kind of get out of them sometimes. I have like a little minute or two little PowerPoint, a couple things I'm still working on that didn't make it in here, but I'd just like to point out to you real quick. Let me see if I can get this to work. Okay, so one of the things I had heard a quote, and I was thinking, and I looked up who said it first, and it was William Faulkner. History is, history is not was, it is. So the idea of the fact this is a living, breathing thing, um, these people and their lives, I will point out that Mary Emma Thompson, who was the one that started me on this journey, she unfortunately passed away four years ago. But she had a passion for it. I thought it would be appropriate to have her be in here because she was the one that started me on this. Um, and let's go back here. So I talked to people about going down the rabbit hole. Okay. So I always tell people to join me down the rabbit hole. So it was about three weeks ago, 
I was reading about who saw say, the uh, Cezanne exhibit across the way. Yeah. Well, Cezanne was one of uh, Henry Varnapore's heroes. He saw the first show of Picasso's in Cezanne when he studied in, uh, when he was in England. So when he was a young man, he was actually in World War I. He stayed over in France, and he studied with Walter Sickert. I don't know if anybody's heard of him before. Very famous English artist. He studied at the Slade School in London in the Julian Academy in France, and he was a young man. Very rare time for somebody to be doing that. Looking up Walter Sickert a couple weeks ago, turns out when he got older, he changed his name, and he did some curious paintings called Jack the Ripper's House, and there have been books written now that suggest that this artist that Henry Varnapore studied with was Jack the Ripper. Like, oh my God, this is too much now. I can't can't take. It. There have been people who have debunked this, but it's it's out there. Um, so Sandberg, Lindsay, and Sullivan all spent time at the Cliff Dwellers Club, which you are at tonight. And the history of this place is amazing, as we see. Okay, so this is where's Waldo or the the murals? Crow House is where the murals were drawn. And I found this picture. Actually, I have one without the. I paid a lot to get that off of there. But anyway, this picture, do you see what's back here? That's the mural. It's the one I came across in the who's who in Rockland County of 1942. Uh, this AP picture, he's doing a war, uh, like a propaganda poster. This is Bessie Brewer, his wife, who was a, a very well-known writer. And some of her um, stories were made in the films. She actually was big. Peter was telling me a lot of her friends and um, Man Ray and all these other people in the village, which was interesting. So that's Bessie Brewer. She was a writer. That's Peter's mom. Uh, let's see here. Of course, that's the Sandberg, Rachel Lindsay, one of them, the other one. They were installed in 1943. Um, everywhere you go, I find pictures of him doing things, but I couldn't find any proof ever in Chicago and install those tiles. One of the experts told me they think he fired them in New Jersey. There's 16 of them, and that they were shipped here. They were just put them in the post office over here, which is kind of interesting. But 1943 is a very interesting time because that's when, as I was saying before, he was in Alaska as a war correspondent, a war artist. So, do you all know about Goth Target? Do you are familiar with TikTok? Okay. So, TikTok is the latest fad social media. A lot of young people use TikTok. And there is a trend of thousands and thousands of people doing stories about Goth Target. So, the Louis Sullivan building, the Carson, per the Carson Peary Scott building is now a Target. Apparently, some young person walked by and was like, oh, gothy, you know, like goth talking about musicians like The Cure and Depeche Mode and heavy eyeliner and wearing black, so I guess I, I fit in there a little bit. Young people, all these very young, look at 151,000 million likes. And what they do is they say, they'll do like little one-minute videos of like the outside and like, look at how cool this is. This is like a goth thing. This should be goth target. And so it's cool places to visit Illinois, number one. Let's go to Goth Target. So there's something about it I think is amazing how that building is actually in the zeitgeist of young people, but for maybe a completely other reason, when they don't know the history of it. So I just think that, that I came across that recently. I was just eh, I'm going the wrong way here. Okay. So some other sections to yet is about him serving Henry Varnum Poor in Alaska in 1943 when the tiles were installed. So he serves in Alaska as a war artist. Uh, there was a Major Marston he becomes friends with. He wrote a book. This is his drawing of Major Marston signing native Alaskans, Eskimos, up to the Northern Guard. So they were the ones that protected because they were worried that Japan would try to invade Alaska. He 
the stories he tells in that book are amazing. I love the, the, these people that lived in Alaska because they were all very, um, he, he just thought they were very majestic and they just had a very, um, their internal soul. They were very simple people, but they had like a, I guess I would compare it to, there he is. Now, I don't know if you recognize any of these names. You might, Edward Lanning. Edward, have you ever been to the New York Public Library? And there's the history of the written word. He, this gentleman, did that. Um, I was actually working for a time over at the Marshall Field, Macy's area. And uh, when I started this project, I told her we were talking about working on this project. She came in a year later, and she brought a picture she had purchased from her friend that Edward Lanning had done off in Alaska. So there's a history of the written word. And if you go through this lobby, do you recognize this is where the scene in Ghostbusters, where the first ghost is that they go and they grab. So basically that's all in Ghostbusters, those pictures, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and I'm going the wrong way. Sorry, hold on a second. Okay, so these pictures here, again, maybe nobody has seen them in 70, 80 years but us tonight. These are contact sheets. I don't know if they were ever printed. These are in the National Archives. These are pictures he, Henry Varnum Poor took of, this is um, Mucktuck, whale blubber. And these are pictures he took there. And like I said, I just thought it was fascinating. I don't know if anyone's ever seen these pictures before. Um, sorry. These are two pictures I got from a museum that he, that's in Alaska that he did during the war. They're both in a museum in Anchorage. There's the book and more pictures. Apparently they handled the rifles and they really liked that. Okay, so now you're looking at, besides me and a couple people, nobody knows this Man Ray photo exists. So we're looking at a picture right now. Literally, you guys are the first people besides. Man Ray was Peter Poor's mom's friend. I have a couple other pictures of like him as a little kid taken by Man Ray. I'm sure we all I figure you're all familiar with him. But what's very cool in this project, I'm like, boy, that's a picture like nobody in the world knows exists that Man Ray took. And these pictures are very, very valuable. And I think it'd be interesting. That's his mom. This is something else interesting. These are sketches he did for the in the post office. So these are sketches. And his, Peter, he always picked famous people. We couldn't figure out who this is. It's supposed to be a We actually kind of narrowed down to maybe Jane Adams, maybe, from the time period. But he loved to paint cats and birds and all the nature things, just like Sullivan. He was very connected to things in the natural world. And um, I don't know who that is. But it's pretty cool that those are good. Now, this was a couple weeks ago. Cezanne. There's a Cezanne. There's Henry Varnum Poor's painting. What you're looking at is Ben Hecht's bathtub. You know who Ben Hecht is? He was a Chicago newspaper man, writer. Um, he won the first Academy Award for screenwriting, and he did plays in New York. Uh, he approached Peter, he approached Henry Barn Poor said, can you make me a kind of my bathtub? So Peter one day unrolled these for me. He's like, this was stuck out at the house. You know, you did this for Ben Heck. So again, I don't know if anybody's ever seen these before. But again, I would. this was like two, three weeks ago. There is, say, Varn Poor, pretty similar. Uh, that was his artistic hero. And then just some production shots of, Jude did sound. He was out of town today. He couldn't be here. Penn State. And then this is the house. This is actually the board. Little, this is how he measured out the um, tiles. So, and then this is the house here. And if you want, there is a petition from the Henry Varnum Poor Foundation on change.org to restore the house that, that came out about two months ago. They're trying to petition the town to allow somebody to buy it and restore it so it could be a studio for artists and everything else. So that's kind of the end of that. The point is, is that 
you know, you start looking at something here and you end up in New City. I found that this is thinking about the project and listening to the voices. It was just like, yeah, this has got to be preserved. I mean, it should be. It's, 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 it should be preserved. I don't know how it's going to be. Um, just like, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to the post office on Irving Park, where Goodman post office. Um, Steve Goodman, who wrote City in New Orleans, but of course more famous in Chicago, he wrote Go Cubs Go, um, because he was a big Cubs fan, and they sing after every victory. In there is the restored artwork from WPA. There's pictures of the person who did the art, and there's a whole thing about Steve Goodman in there. So I approached the post office about um, doing that in Uptown, and I got, we have no budget answer. It's not an answer I'm standing by at this point, because the first person was in a different administration that helped me, and then the last administration, they weren't very friendly to people at the post office. And now I'm kind of, might have changed a little bit. But so part of it is I'd like to see them, you know, preserve this house and maybe get a marker up here that says, hey, you know, this is an important piece of artwork that should be preserved. But um, that's all I have to say. Is comments or anything they want to? Yes. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening, by the way, because it's all been in my head and I got to get it out. <laughs> yes, sir. I know Fred might say I'm insane, right, Fred? Just like you. Um, yeah. Um, I, you know, I've been a filmmaker doing independent stuff in, in the city. I've screened at Gene Siskel Film Center and, you know, Brew and View and a lot of other stuff with my projects. And um, I don't know. It's something weird about being open to the to the spirit of something. Because Carl Sandburg once said, projects walk up to me, was this quote. And like the American Sog Mag was one of them. He would do things because he, like the Lincoln thing, he started as a children's book. And then it kept coming and coming. And he said, oh, I have to be aware of this coming to me. Um, I'll give you an example, too, of how it Appreciate the question. Do you remember the guy in the train? Did I mention this yet? No. The guy in the train, the Capital Limited, from here to Washington, D.C. A few years ago, I was on that train going to the National Archives to look up information. I was saying earlier that I was sitting in coach. Now I get a private suite. But at the time, I was in coach. And the woman next to me I didn't know was just was annoying me was the words I used. So I got up and I went to the observation deck car and I was just sitting there and I saw a guy taking pictures, this guy that was in the film, of trains. And I don't usually talk to people on the train, on the Amtrak. It's a good idea not to. And he said, I said to him, oh, what, what are you taking pictures of? And he said, oh, not the trains, but the graffiti on the trains. I'm a painter. I own a paint company in Washington, D.C. I said, well, that's pretty cool. He's like, yeah, I just got on this train from Los Angeles. My wife and I, they threw our bags on. I hope we have them. We we're running late. Thank God we, we're visiting my daughter. We're going home. Why are you going to Washington, D.C.? I don't know why I said this. I said, well, I'm working on this project. You see, you probably never heard of this guy, Henry Varnum Poor. He's this artist that did these murals at the post office by where I live. And he says to me, my grandfather hired Henry Varnum Poor to do the murals at Penn State. That's why the interview's in there. And I, I kind of sat there, and, I, and later I thought of all of the probabilities of that. Made my head hurt. I was like, this is crazy. I was like, hold on, let me go get my recorder, and I'll come back and interview you. So I interviewed him. And then that was stewing around. The pandemic happened. Uh, Richard Porter, who was the expert at Penn State, who had run the gallery, PhD with um, about Henry Varnum Poor, 
he worked with um, Harold Dixon, the man's uh, grandfather. And so he knew him as well. And so when I was interviewing him about two months ago, he said, let's go out to dinner afterwards. I said, fine. He's like, I met, I know this guy. He's really in, he knows, you know, some of these same people. He was a relative of Harold Dixon. The man at the dinner was the cousin of the man on the train I met. And I sat there and I was like, it, that's the kind of thing I was like, my head hurt. I was like, what are the chances of this? So anyway, what happened, he told me all the story about Harold Dixon and his father had died and he had all this stuff from his grandparents in the house. And he pulls out a suitcase, pulling Henry Varnum poor plates out and pictures and like the guy doesn't even know what he's got, you know, in this house. So to further make it strange, after all of this, we were sitting in the car and we got a tap on the window and it was that guy and he, um, the gentleman who had come. Uh, the, the other cousin, and he said, I want you to know, I wasn't getting a reception, but when I walked away, I had a phone message on my phone, and it was my cousin calling me. He hasn't called me in several years. He called me when we were sitting at that meal. The guy in the train called the other guy while we were sitting there, and they haven't talked in years. And it was one of those things where I said, uh, I don't know, you probably recognize Tim Samuelson. Yeah. I told him some of these stories, and he said, you know, I have done and seen these projects, and when you start doing things, stuff starts to appear. Things are connected to things, and they start coming out. He's like, I can't explain it, but you're not crazy because it's happening. So that's my long answer to your question. That stuff kept happening to me, and so I, I went, oh, I better do this. So anyway, thanks for the questions. Anybody else have any questions, comments? Oh, and uh, Paul Miller here, um, who's from the Detroit area, he, he has a radio show there. He was the voiceover you heard. So we, he's uh, worked a lot with me. And then I have, a, and I have an actor friend here who did his little Carl Sandburg voiceover and guitar. So Jeff, thank you very much. But if you want to, I do have a website that I will send to uh, that you can look stuff up, a blog about the project. You'll probably be able to get through Cliff Dwellers if you send Kristen an email. And thank you. I appreciate you all coming. Yes. Yeah, well, if you know George Lucas, you know, he's always redoing his stuff. It doesn't end if it, does, if it keeps having information. Eventually, you know, I'll get it out there. But anyway, thank you for coming, everyone. Buffalo, Michigan. Oh, okay.